Eye for Color, the story of Joseph Albers, Natasha Wing. The art is by Julia Brickenride in the style of Joseph Albers. The book's published by Henry Holt and Company. Joseph Albers saw art in the simplest things. Growing up in a coal mining city in Germany, he watched his father paint doors as if they were artist canvases. As a poor student, he mined scraps from the dump and turned them into collages that shined like jewels. When he became an art teacher, he experimented with glass and optical illusions. In 1933, Joseph was invited to teach in America. His goal was to open eyes. Watch what's going on, he told his students, and capture the accident. Although he found simple beauty in America, it was Mexico that captured his eye. The buildings, the pottery, the way colors look different under the Mexican sun fascinated him. He wrote to a fellow artist, Mexico is truly the promised land of abstract art. During one visit, he made a series of abstract paintings inspired by adobe buildings. Their flat roofs and smooth, sun-dried mud surfaces were both simple and bold. Over and over again, Joseph painted nothing but rectangles, long rectangles, tall rectangles, rectangles within rectangles, all in different combinations of colors. Interesting effects emerged. When he changed the colors of the rectangles, the mood of the painting changed. Some paintings felt happy, others quiet. Colors themselves changed. Blue looked different next to orange than it did next to beige. Color was not what it first appeared to be, but why? What else could it do? Determined to learn more, he set out to study color as carefully as a scientist. He started in the simplest way possible. In 1949, at the age of 61, Joseph began his exploration. First, he chose one shape, the most geometrically perfect shape, the square. Next, he picked the purest form of color, paint, straight from the tube, no mixing. Last, there would be no overlapping of colors, just colors side by side. He painted squares within squares of different sizes and colors. Colors came to life like actors on a stage. One color stepped away, another popped forward. Colors became softer and louder. The yellow is the same in both squares, only the background has changed. One color became two. The green is the same in both squares, only the background has changed. Or changed into its opposite. Stare at this square for 30 seconds and then look here. Colors even disappeared. Joseph kept making painting after painting of squares. With each painting, he proved that colors don't stand alone. They interact. I can kill the most brilliant red by putting it with violet, he said. I can make the dullest gray in the world dance by setting it against black. Joseph put his findings into a book interaction of color. It changed the way the art world looked at color and the way teachers taught art. The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York recognized the importance of Joseph's study. It was the first time the museum ever gave a living artist a one-man show of his life's work. For 27 years, Joseph created images of squares, more than a thousand of them. For him, there was no end to what he could learn about color. I'm not paying homage to a square, said Joseph. It's only the dish 
I serve my craziness about color in. Today, his squares hang in art galleries around the world, showing that color alone, as simple as it is, can be an exciting form of art. And here's Joseph at his house in Orange, Connecticut in 1971.